I think we are what we remember. And what we have in us, they can't take away from you. Let me explain exactly what I mean. We have learned in our century that they can take everything away from you. Your house, your family, your livelihood, that we are all wanderers, more or less hunted on this earth. I would define the history of this century that now hundreds of millions of people in Africa, in the Balkans, Southeast Asia, soon in other places, are becoming Jews, quote unquote, that is to say, are becoming hunted or hunters. What you carry with you, the bastards can't touch. They tell a true story of one of the camps, Birkenau. There was a librarian, one of the great Polish Jewish seminaries, a man with one of those Torah Talmudic memories, not so rare in that culture. He knew the five books of Moses by heart, of course, but also much of the Talmud, the Midrash, and the Mishnah. And in the camp, he said to people, if you need to look up something, come and look it up in me. Open the book of myself, a magnificent image. I'm carrying it with me, and you can check. And don't worry that you've lost all books. Look me up. It's a story which, which Kafka might have found. It, it's, it's one of the lasting parables. Much less dramatically, In Ezekiel, in the Old Testament, in the prophet Ezekiel, God dictates to the prophet a text and then says, I want you to eat the scroll. Careful. Eat is eat in Hebrew. It has nothing metaphoric. You put it in your mouth and you eat it like a spy eats his secret message, we are told in spy novels. And the surprised prophet does it, and of course... The meaning is it becomes part of you. It becomes totally part of you. The great Elizabethan playwright Shakespeare's rival, Ben Jonson, will use the verb ingest, like digest, but it's more powerfully. You ingest it. You eat it, it becomes fiber of your fiber, heart of your heart, core cordis sursum, and it will stay with you. And suddenly you realize that the house of your own inside has wonderful furniture. Most of us don't create very much. So to be able to find in our house a company of the master spirits, of the great spirits, of whom Milton called them the lifeblood of the master spirits, means you come home to a very full house, to a very full house. Well, we've got to quote, we've got to quote. We've got to quote, and we've got to tell a great story which will answer your whole question, and which I hope you will not cut out, because it doesn't concern me, but it's one of the touchstones of civilization. In the 1937 Soviet Writers' Congress, it was the worst year, or one of the worst years. One disappeared like flies every day. They told Pasternak, if you speak, they arrest you, and if you don't speak, they arrest you for Ironic insubordination. 2,000 people there. Stanov on the platform, the Stalinist killer, police killer. And it was a three-day meeting. Every speech was thanks for Brother Stalin, thanks to Father Stalin, thanks to the Leninist-Stalinist new model of truth. And not a word from Pasternak. On the third day, his friend said to him, look, they're going to arrest you anyway, please. Maybe you should say something for the rest of us to carry with us. Now, he was over six feet, as you know, incredibly beautiful. And when Pasternak got up, everyone knew. He gets up. I'm told you could hear the silence till Vladivostok. And he gives a number. Number. And 2,000 people got up. It was the number of a certain Shakespeare sonnet of which he had done a translation, which the Russians say is with Pushkin, one of their greatest texts, so it's Shakespeare. When I summon up 
Remembrance of Things Past, the sonnet of Shakespeare on memory. I summon up Remembrance of Things Past. And they recited it by heart, the 2,000 people. The Pasternak translation. It said everything. It said, you can't touch us, you can't destroy Shakespeare, you can't destroy the Russian language, you can't destroy the fact that we know by heart what Pasternak has given us, and they didn't arrest him. It's one of the very great stories. When a sweet session of silent thought, I summon up remembrance of things past. The sweet session of silent thought. I'm told that in Russian it's even as magical, as magical. Well, in that case, the sons of bitches don't arrest you. That is, or if they do, it's too late. The other people have your treasure with them. Nobody can arrest everybody. Mandelstam's poems were all confiscated, and Nadezhda, the wife, taught one poem to ten people. That means that for the 60 poems, 600 people had them. The 10 taught them to 10, and they were safe. They were apt, nothing could stop. This, I think, is the deepest form of publication that we can possibly mm -hmm. have. It's the publication mm -hmm. of the human soul. So, yes, it is central to my techniques, to my teaching, to my beliefs, to the way I work, uh, to what I am. Remember, I belong to a people where in modern times it was said nothing will remain of you, not even ash. And it is perfectly correct that millions of the names are gone. And no one knows where they are because they are ash in the wind. They cannot even be buried or visited. Uh, Nazis said the memories of memory will be gone. So the answer is no. Uh, you almost did it, but not quite.